Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about a cool concept in linear algebra and data science called normal vectors. Now normal vectors are something you learn early on in your linear algebra course, but I don't think that the connection between when you learn it and all the places you use it down the road in data science concepts is too obvious. So this video is going to serve a couple of purposes. First, we're going to define from scratch what is a normal vector. Then we are going to talk about some of the big places normal vectors show up in uh, data science down the road so you can have an intuition about why we care. And finally, we'll talk about how to mathematically derive the equation for a normal vector under certain circumstances. So starting from what a normal vector actually is. The easiest place to start here, the best place to start, I think, is a line in two dimensions, just because that's pretty apparent to all of us. We've all learned this since our beginning algebra courses. So we have this blue diagonal line, which we're going to call L, and we know that the equation of that line is w1x1 plus w2x2 plus w0 is equal to zero. So you can rearrange this in whatever form you want, point slope form, uh, slope intercept form, whatever, but in the end they have this general form. Now when we start taking linear algebra, we learn that actually we can think about this in a different way. We can say that actually this line, this blue line we see, is actually perfectly characterized by all vectors x who have components x1 and x2 where those two components satisfy this equation. So everything I've said so far is all the same knowledge, it's just that when we start taking linear algebra, we start thinking about vectors. And in the context of vector spaces and vectors, we know that a line here in two dimensions is just the set of all vectors who satisfy this equation here. And if we go up to three dimensions, that becomes a plane. If we go up to four dimensions, it's a hyperplane, and so on and so on and so on. So in general, you can just add more of these wx terms and you can go up in dimensions. But coming back to two dimensions for a moment, we have this line here. And like we said, the line is characterized as all x who satisfy w transpose x plus w naught is equal to zero. This little equation here is just a compact vector form of this more written out expression up there. So we know that's the definition of the line. Now let's bring in the concept of a normal vector to that line. So if we can find some vector p who is normal to the line, then p is perpendicular to any vector v who is on the line L. Now let me unpack this definition first of what does it mean to be on L. So vector v is on the line L if v can be expressed as the difference of two vectors, a and b, where a and b satisfy this equation, or this equation up here. Now, I don't think that's helped a lot of people so far. I've just pretty much read what's on the board, so let me unpack this more intuitively. So actually, let's start with these a's and b's. So a and b are any two vectors that satisfy this equation. In other words, visually, they're any two of these green vectors here. So all this set of green vectors are just a couple of the vectors I've drawn that satisfy this equation, who again, perfectly characterize that line. They are all the vectors who end at a point who is on the line. So we pick any two of those vectors. For example, pretend we pick this guy and this guy. So we picked two vectors who are satisfying that equation. Then we take the difference of those two vectors and we call that V. So let me draw that. So that would look something like this. Okay, so we have this vector v who is the difference of any two of these green vectors, and we say that vector v is on the line. And you can kind of see intuitively why I've chosen this word on. I guess another word you could have chosen is along the line. It basically goes in the direction of the line. And if you go up to two dimensions and you have a plane, then a vector being on the plane basically means that is inside the surface of the plane. So here it's basically along the surface of the line. So now that we got that concept down, we can talk about any normal vector p having to be perpendicular to this vector v, no matter which a's and b's we chose to subtract to get that v in the first place. So this is just one possible v. I could have chosen this green vector and this green vector, and I would have got a longer vector along that line. Or I could have chosen a different set, and I would have got a vector v that's in the opposite direction along the line. But any normal vector p needs to satisfy the condition that it is perpendicular or orthogonal or normal, all these words are kind of interchangeable in this context, and more specifically has dot product of zero with any of these vectors v that are on the line. And so this might have seemed really wordy for something you learned back in the day as just being perpendicular, but it's important to phrase it this way because it's going to allow us to mathematically uh, derive what that normal vector would be at the end of this video. But just know the big concepts you want to make sure you understand are that if any vector satisfies this equation, 
then it's like these green vectors who end on the line or end on the plane. But those are not the vectors that we consider being on the line or on the plane. The vectors we consider being on the line or on the plane are actually any subtractions of any two of these green vectors. And it is those vectors that are on the line or on the plane who we're concerned with having dot product of zero, being perpendicular, orthogonal, or normal with this vector p. So here's such a vector p, because this vector p, if I take the dot product of that, with any vector that is on or along the line, it's going to be zero. p could have been longer, could have been shorter, could have been pointing in the opposite direction, and all of those vectors are fair game for being normal vectors. So there's not like one normal vector, there's a whole family of them, but the only condition they need to satisfy is that normality condition. So hopefully we understand that. Now let's kind of think about why we care about this concept of being perpendicular, normal, orthogonal to things. So let's talk about two of the big concepts, two of the big topics in data science. There's of course others, but just two of them are, first of all, SVM, or support vector machines. We have a whole set of videos on them, so I'm not going to go into much detail. But basically we have two classes, and we want to find some decision boundary such that the margin around that decision boundary to the two classes is maximized because we want to separate them with a good degree of buffer. Now part of that process when we looked at the math behind SVM is actually calculating the size of the margin because that's something we're concerned with maximizing. Now if you want to look at the size of the margin basically that's going to be twice this distance here and part of calculating that distance is going to be calculating this normal vector from this decision boundary because you have to think about how many units in that direction do I go before I get to this part of the margin here or how many units do I go in this direction before I get to this part of the margin here. So normal vectors are very very important at the heart of SVM so that's one of the reasons we care about them. Another reason we care about them is in the context of principal component analysis so we also had a whole set of videos on that but in a nutshell PCA tries to project your data into a lower dimensional space for various reasons. Let's say we have some three-dimensional data, so all these x's you see are three-dimensional data. And let's say that we're trying to project them into two dimensions. So basically we're trying to take this three-dimensional data cloud and project it onto some plane in two dimensions. So that plane is given by this black surface here. So basically that means we're going to project all the points down onto this plane, so you can see some of those arrows kind of representing this. Hopefully my art skills are enough for you to get this visualization in your head. And so the remaining question is that of course there's going to be some error after this projection because the data lives in inherently three dimensions and we're kind of trying to flatten it into two dimensions. But that means that there's some error. And the big question is in which direction is that error? And the answer would be that the unexplained component is in the direction of the normal vector to this plane. So if you ask me to draw a vector that is normal to this plane, then you would draw this vector or going in the downwards direction, whatever magnitude you want. But this vector here is normal to the plane because no matter which vector you pick that's in the plane, this vector is going to have dot product of zero with that vector, just like the definition we talked about here. And so it's exactly in that direction where we have this residuals that we don't have explained by the plane. So that's all these lines you see here. Those lines are going exactly in the same direction as this arrow here. So it's very important in PCA. Many other applications, I just wanted to talk about two big ones. And now to finish this video, let's think about mathematically, how do I actually get the normal vector? Because we just called it P here, but how would I actually get some vector that is normal to some line or some plane or some hyperplane? Now I want to quickly just note that uh, normal vectors, this conversation is not limited to linear stuff, because we're talking about just linear stuff in this video. You could by all means have like a sphere and talk about normal vectors to that sphere. It's just not the topic of this video. So let's talk about the math behind how to actually get this vector p. I think the final result, which you can see it here, but I'm going to walk you through it, is very elegant and is not something that you would necessarily expect, but it's something that's super nice for all the calculations you do with normal vectors in data science. So let's walk through that process. So again, let's let s be some n-dimensional hyperplane. So if n is equal to 1, we're just talking about a line. If n is equal to 2, we're talking about a plane, whatever, so on. So it's just some hyperplane that lives in n plus 1 dimensions. So a line is one-dimensional, but it lives in two dimensions. So if s is a n-dimensional hyperplane, then it lives in n plus 1 dimensions. That's not too important to this, just wanted to throw that out there. 
So the goal is to find some vector p. So by the way, I'm just choosing to call this normal vector p for perpendicular, but you can call it whatever you want. Uh, we're going to need to find some p such that for every a and b who satisfy this definition of s, so w transpose a plus w naught is equal to zero, and w transpose b plus w naught is equal to zero. So thinking back to here, that's exactly the definition of the hyperplane itself. So if we can find two vectors that satisfy that definition, and we take their difference, a minus b, then we need for p, this normal vector, to always have dot product of zero with that difference. That's the same discussion we just had in the beginning of the video. So that's all good. So how do we use all this knowledge to actually find what p should be? Let's do a very natural thing. Let's subtract this equation from this equation, or the other way around, doesn't really matter. So if we subtract these two equations, we're gonna get w transpose, a minus b, the w naughts just kind of cancel each other out, and that's equal to zero. Now, let me kind of phrase this in terms of intuition, what we've actually done. We said that if there's any two vectors, a and b, who satisfy the definition of the hyperplane s, then we know that w transpose of the difference between those two vectors is equal to zero. In other words, this vector w is actually perpendicular or normal or orthogonal to the difference between any two vectors who satisfy the definition of the hyperplane. But hold on, that's exactly what we're asking for in some theoretical normal vector p. That means w is that theoretical normal vector. w is the vector that is normal to this hyperplane s. And Maybe some of you are just like, oh, that's so obvious, but personally, I don't think it's obvious, and I think it's really cool, because we've had this W just like floating around the whole time. It was part of the definition of the hyperplane, and to have it also be the vector that is normal to the hyperplane just seems like this really cool thing, because now we can look at any hyperplane, which is defined by some linear equation, and we can just collect all these Ws, W1, W2, all the way to Wn, and put them in a big vector and we can confidently say that that vector is normal to your hyperplane and that's kind of crazy. So I've just summarized that here. So W is exactly the normal vector to S. So that's how you'd mathematically get the normal vector to a hyperplane in linear algebra and data science. This ends up being a really nifty thing to have in SVM and all these other applications. Okay, so I hope you learned about normal vectors, how to understand them intuitively, where they come up in some places in data science, and how to look at them mathematically. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.